Hey all, welcome to Newspaper Breakdown. Uh, it is the 23rd of the 12th. Few bits of news uh, to get through. As always, there is much more news out there. Lots of stuff to see, lots of stuff to read about, but I just pick the things that I consider to be a mix of import and interesting. Uh, so we'll start with uh, the US. Uh, today, the US Congressional Panel said that Trump was the central cause of last year's attack on the US Capitol, um, uh, with its final report laying out evidence and offering the most damning uh, assessment yet of Trump's attempt to overthrow the US government. Uh, the panel was bipartisan, which I think is uh, important to note. Uh, and the ones on the Republican side have been screwed over by the Republicans. Uh, a lot of them are either uh, not standing or did not stand for the most recent elections, uh, mid midterm elections, and those who did lost their seats. Um, so it's very important that we look at them and understand that they have sacrificed as they should we have to keep that in mind as well remember that doing good is for the sake of just doing good you shouldn't be you shouldn't really be praised for doing the right thing although in this society in this world it seems such a rarity that we do hold people up to a higher standard if they are not being complete and utter piles of shit all of the time. Um, the report said that Trump and his allies made multiple efforts to corruptly obstruct, impede, uh, or influence the counting of electoral votes on January the 6th and thereby overturn the lawful results of the election. Very interesting uh, what will happen. Of course, this, uh, this US congressional panel has told the uh, recommended to the Justice Department that they should investigate potentially arrest charge Donald Trump. So it'll be very interesting to see how this goes in the long run because we're already deep in the rabbit hole at this point. You've got you've got so many people who believe in these conspiracies and. Uh, especially in the US they tend to have guns and more bullets than brain cells which is always a concern uh, you also got uh, a, this is another story on the US but involving more uh, Britain has joined the EU South Korea and Canada in criticising Biden's huge US packages of green, green subsidies uh, warning that it is protectionist and will hit the UK-based uh, makers of electric vehicles, batteries, and other renewables. This is a hark back to before Trump, when the US was still a pile of shit, still very protectionist, but you don't think that they're also saddling up with authoritarian loons, apart from, of course, those in the Middle East, but that's oil and they buy weapons, don't they? So, uh, this is the uh, $369 billion uh, Inflation Reduction Act that passed in August and has been criticized uh, for its structure, uh, which includes tax credits for green tech aimed at luring investment to the US and uh, cutting carbon emissions. Cutting carbon emissions, good. But, um, right, as, as it says here, the uh, EU, South Korea and Canada are among those claiming that uh, the act breaks the World Trade Organization rules for tying aid to the US domestic uh, production. So the uh, WTO rules say that if you're trying to get investment in, what you can't do is you can't say, well, we're going to give you subsidies if you put all your money with us because you're at that point you're buying investment basically aren't you um, and that's that's not fair but 
when is any part of capitalism fair? Um, one particular issue is that the Act uh, is a, uh, has a provision to restrict a 7,500 subsidy for purchasing of electric cars to the substantially, for these to be substantially made with parts from North America and assembled there. And raw materials from batteries would need to be sourced from countries with a free trade agreement with the US. This, of course, excludes the EU and the UK. I know that Boris Johnson said that we would have a free trade agreement with the US in like two ticks of a tock, but we haven't and we were never going to. And we, when they said originally during the Brexit uh, vote that the UK would be at the back of the line, they weren't lying. Uh, and just the EU and the US, they've tried to do um, trade deals. You had the TTIP from years ago that was an absolute train wreck. And if I recall rightly, was stopped by uh, Belgium. Of course, it's a very small part because of their voting, but I can't remember all of the details of it. Um, what else have we got? Three stories left. Three interesting, I think interesting, but I'm a I'm a dweeb with all of this tedious shit. Um, illegal tree felling in England will be punishable by unlimited fines and prison sentencing from next year, starting the 1st of uh, January. Uh, currently, the fine for cutting down a tree without a license is £2,500 or twice the value of the timber. This was established in the Forestry Act of 1967. Um, but development, uh, the development value of the land has been the major uh, force pushing for tree felling, not uh, for timber. And uh, development land tends to be more expensive, so you get, you get more value from it than the fine. So you're there just adding it into your expenses, basically. You're there going, right, well, I want to develop this land, put some fucking houses on it and sell them. You may get fined £15,000 for it, but fine, we'll put that in the expenses. We're able to take that on the chin. Um, but the unlimited fines is there to deter uh, uh, property barons from just felling trees and paying the fine. Uh, now allowing uncapped fines, meaning that instead of taking 15k on the chin, you may get fined half a mil, a mil, and all of a sudden felling that tree so you can build a house isn't as good for you. Critics have uh, questioned whether the harsh uh, punishments or harsh penalties will actually be enforced. With last month, The Guardian revealed uh, only 15 of the 4,002 alleged illegal felling cases reported resulted in conviction. That was between 2012 to 13 and 2021 to 22. And this is... This is with all uh, new laws that come in. It's all whether or not it's enforced. Uh, it, for me, it goes back to the argument made over the Leventon Inquiry, if you will remember the Leventon Inquiry, uh, with regards to the phone hacking and the morals or lack thereof uh, shown by our media. And everyone called for more regulation. We need more laws, we need more regulation. And my first thought was, isn't all of this illegal already? Like hacking someone's phone was illegal. Taking bribes was illegal. Putting in new laws isn't gonna make any difference, just adding more stuff. If, unless you enforce them, it's a pointless fucking exercise. We do the same with uh, terrorism. Every feels like every six, seven months, or every year, we bring in more terrorist laws that cover the exact same shit as previous laws did, just slightly different worded. 
normally brought in as an attempt to cut that little bit more. That's why you bring in a new law to cut a little bit more freedoms from regular people. Um, final two. Uh, you've got uh, with the flow and with flu and COVID on the rise in England. Uh, experts have stressed the importance of vaccinations and warned people uh, who feel unwell that they should stay at home rather than go out and mingle. Uh, scarlet fever and strep A is also on the rise at the moment. Um, I do not remember a time, and I'm only 34, but I do not remember a time in my lifetime where there has been as many uh, major health issues as there are currently. Um, they're completely right about this, whether or not you listen to experts, I don't know if you do. Um, but we have a problem, it's with work as well. You have those people who come rain or shine, they go into work. Oh no, I'm here to work, I'm here to work, and they're absolutely on death's door. Now why have you come in? Well it's just me mate, isn't it? Just me. I do not respect those who martyr themselves like that. I do not think they're good people. If you're ill, do not go to work. The problem, the problem there, is that because of uh, capitalism and how our society is set up, we have people who quite literally can't afford to do that. If you miss time, you do not get paid. And if you do not get paid, you can't afford anything. That's where the fundamental change needs to occur then we would have, hopefully, if you're ill, you'd be able to stay at home and not spread around lurgy to every fucking Tom, Dick and Harry. But, layer upon layer of horseshit, innit? Finally, uh, the target to clear up, uh, to clean up the majority of England's rivers, lakes and coastal waters suffering from a mix of agricultural and sewage pollution uh, has been pushed back from 19, uh, 20, fucking 1927, from 2027 to 2063, a 36 year pushback, that is longer than I've been alive, that push, that's what they're doing, we're going to clean everything and it's all going to be cleaned by 2027, fuck, no it's not, let's push it back an adult, that's what they've done, they've pushed it back a fucking adult. Um, not one of England's waterways, including rivers, lakes, estuaries, and coastal waters, is in good ecological or ecological ecological. That's an actual word. Uh, ecological uh, and chemical health at present. Um, pollution from water treatment plants and agriculture are the key sources of damage. I mean, you do. The Environmental Agency has said that £5.3 billion is going to be invested over the next five years uh, to stop further deterioration. That's not even to attempt to reverse it. That's just to just, just, just leave it where it is. It's all fucked. We do not have a single part in the UK, in England, where rivers are healthy, where water is fucking healthy. And they're going, well, are we going to try to reverse it? No, we're going to attempt to just stop it there. Stop it where it's all fucked for the moment. There's nothing else we can do. It's another example of this fucking government. So useless, so lazy, so incompetent, so fucking backward that there is not a single, a single thing that you can argue has been improved since they've come in in 2010. Unless, of course, you dislike uh, how many people have a home. Homelessness has gone uh, up from there. So if, if you enjoy the fact that there are homeless people, then you'd be massively happy. Apart from that, there's absolutely nothing. Um, Friday today, I don't do stuff on the weekend because I don't want to. Well, I don't do this, I, I do other stuff. Um, so, not going to be doing tomorrow, not going to be doing Sunday, because that's Christmas. Won't be doing Monday, because that's Boxing Day, and I go see me dad on Boxing Day, so I don't want to wake up on Monday and do this. 
I may do, but I don't plan on. So potentially the 27th uh, will be the next one. Um, so I hope you have a, a good Christmas. If you're with people, if you're on your own, just find a touch of enjoyment. Have a nice Baileys or something, a nice, uh, nice bloody vodka or something and enjoy. I'm going to go buy myself a Baileys. Okay, catch you later.